Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my session where I would like to show you my process of preparing applications for Intune deployment and how amazing job Windows Sandbox does for me in testing those packages. My name is Matthew Horbach. I'm an automator and toolmaker from PowerShell through Azure Functions to Power Platform. I automate IT team processes and daily tasks. I'm also head maintainer of Microsoft Endpoint Manager in my organization. You can find me on Twitter at Universe Citizen and feel free to check out my blog for more fun stuff. Today's agenda is plain simple. Firstly, I'll show you how to make PowerShell to the, to do the installation for you. Secondly, I will demonstrate testing process with the use of Windows Sandbox. And finally, I'll go through creation of Windows 32 application profile in Intune and also real life deployment. So how to leverage PowerShell to install software? All you need is start process function. Grab your installation file, enter argument list and wait for installation to finish. Various app installers might have different arguments, so be sure to check out documentation. After installation is finished, start process output is exit code of process, so it's not always the same as installation exit code. That is why I'm using set should exit method to set my own exit code for installation script. While running PowerShell on plenty of devices, remember also to set date time formatting in your script. Otherwise, your log files might contain dates formatted in device original settings. Windows Sandbox. When this feature was released, I loved the idea of it. But then I started to wonder, how can I use it for? What can I use it for? For a long time, it was just there. But somewhere in the middle of this year, I've learned that you can create WSB files that contain Sandbox configuration and you can specify login command. In that moment, I knew that it will be perfect for test environment for application installations. On the screen, you can see key elements of Sandbox. So it is a part of Windows since 1903, I think. So you don't need to download any additional system images. You get brand new environment with every run. Sandbox is also aware of device that you are running. For example, if it is laptop on battery, it will resemble that state. What are the prerequisites of before using the Windows Sandbox. So you need Windows 10 Pro, Enterprise, Enterprise or Education. Your device also need to meet those, uh, also need to meet requirements, uh, minimal hardware requirements. But I think that in modern times, almost every device meet those. And on the bottom of the screen, you can see partial installation script for installation command for getting Windows Sandbox on your device. To be able to install software using PowerShell in, and Intune, you need to create Windows 32 application profile. That profile requires uploading encrypted Intune Win file, which contains your script and installation package. To be able to create Intune Win file, you need to download Windows 32, 32 Content Preparation Tool. Do not download the latest version, which is at the moment 181. As I recall, since 1.7 crucial parameter minus a stop, so you will need, so you will not be able to add any additional files besides installation script to Intune Win package. There are some issues raised regarding the program on GitHub, so feel free to add your comment too. While using PowerShell as install command, keep in mind that if you change script name, you will need to change installation command too. 
It happened to me a few times when I wonder why nothing is happening. All that effort with using partial script will allow you to determine device behavior based on script exit code. If your script instead installing apps, do some changes on devices. Remember to make it create some file after its task and provide that file location in detection rule. And at the end, if everything has finished, do not set device to reboot immediately without warning. Users might not like that. If, you're, if reboot is required, set grace period. Intune will nicely handle that for you. All right, so let me get into some scripts. So firstly, I would like to show you my install program script template. It's, divide in, it's divided into two sections. The first section is configuration of parameters and environment. The second section is the installation process. So as you can see, I'm defining parameters uh, for file name, that's our, our installation package, tag, uh, which I will be using in log file. Operating folder is the location where log files are, are going to be stored. Installation argument, uh, argument installation list, and uh, install fail code, install success code. Uh, so yeah, as I told, uh, just before installation file uh, log files will be stored in operating folder with uh, with the log of that name uh, error log file two. Then I'm loading write log function. Uh, this function uh, gives me uh, information about the installation process. I'll get into that in a few clicks. Next key element of whole installation process is exit with code. This function sets the exit code of whole installation script. That is, uh, thanks to that, Intune agent will know what behavior we, we expect from it from the device. And the second part is uh, installation, installation uh, process. And firstly, I'm checking uh, if our operating folder is on device, but I'm just doing it. That's, that's all for this part. And then we got the installation. As you can see, most of it is write log functions, commands, and in try catch block, we got start process, uh, script root. Uh, you may know that uh, environment um, variable. Uh, thanks to that, Intune agent knows where is the, that file name? This this variable contains full location uh, from where our script is run. And then there's the file name. Argument list, uh, pass through, uh, passes the process into our variable. Wait uh, indicates uh, that Terminal should wait, agent should wait before doing any other action before that process is end. And error action stops stop is required to correctly exit the try block into catch if process bumps into any errors or, or termination or fail. So if the process exit code is not zero, then it seems that something went wrong. Uh, I'm writing it into our log file, and then I'm exiting that 
whole installation script with fail code. Otherwise, everything should be fine and installation code, uh, ex exit code for installation script will indicate success. Uh, about that write log file. So um, that function takes three types of information. Uh, three types of logs, info, warn, and error. Then we pass the message. Function start is a switch parameter that is uh, that indicates the message will be start function. And then we determine log file and error log file. And then uh, switch log over. will append the logs into log file, otherwise it will replace all the information within that log file. So our log file information is defined and divided into those sections. First section is timestamp. As I mentioned before, it's the best to pre-format your date time uh, variable, then caller name command. This will tell us which function called our write log uh, command. Caller line name, it will be helpful while debugging. So if uh, this section will contain the line from which our write log file was evoked type if it's uh, info warn or error and then our message uh, yeah for example installation with arguments and the uh, argument list after that message message is predefined uh, it will output into our uh, log file with the correct append um, status and uh, and uh, encoding encoding. If our type error, uh, if our write log, um, if our type will be error, then it will also throw our message. All right. Uh, so that's that's my temple template. Uh, I've got also the uh, create. I've then. Uh, I've created file in install with install VS code PS1. Let me go to the location where it stored. Yeah. So in this location, I created folder install VS code. Within that folder, within that folder, we've got our installation script, installation package, and our write log. To prepare Intune Win package, uh, I've created context menu element packed with Intune Win util. We got the terminal with the process uh, packaging process. After that ends, we got our file. So what happens uh, after I click uh, pack with win, into win util? I'm invoking uh, another partial script that takes package path. So that's the location from which our, we invoke that. Uh, that's the location of folder that we invoked our script on. Uh, Intune win app util takes the arguments C, uh, that's the location of our installation command. Minus S is our installation command. You can see that's that our partial script. Minus O, that's the output of our package. And that uh, important minus A, that states that uh, that states get all the content contents from that folder and get it 
get it into the uh, into a win package. Uh, and the last step is just invoking uh, our application prep tool with the argument list. With that argument list. All right. Uh, so maybe let's test our package. Mm, after a right click, I've created context uh, menu element, run test in sandbox. Our Windows Sandbox environment is starting. Uh, let me tell you what's happening underneath. So, the moment I click uh, run test in Sandbox, I'm invoking this uh, script, which too, which also get, uh, takes the package path, which is location of the file that we clicked on. And then I'm defining uh, parameters, which will be used uh, below for, for script purposes. Um, we got function, a new WSB. Uh, it takes commands to run. This function creates a WSB configuration file in our uh, sandbox operating folder. Uh, that configuration file con is, contains three key, le key elements. A mapping folder, uh, which is uh, the folder that I've clicked uh, in context menu. So it will be that folder. That folder will be mapped in uh, Windows Sandbox uh, with permissions read only. And also I'm mapping folder uh, from uh, my location. Uh, this folder contains uh, Windows application, uh, win Intune Windows application decoding tool. Also only, uh, only read, read only. Uh, the last key element is command to run. Uh, this command will be run in immediately after our environment um, boots. Uh, this configuration file is then saved uh, to this location with the with the name with correct name. So that command uh, that logon command. Uh, so it's that script block. Firstly, I'm checking if there is a location in our environment, sandbox te uh, temp folder, uh, that's C temp. Uh, then I'm copying uh, the contents of mapped folder uh, to the temporary location. And then I'm running uh, Intune Win App Util Decoder uh, on our uh, Intune Win package in this location. Uh, in this location, sorry. Um, after it's uh, decoded, we get the file uh, with extension decoded. So I will need to rename it into zip, then expand expanding this archive into our temporary location, and the lastly, uh, removing the unnecessary archive. So that's for the preparing before the installation in environment and uh, how installation uh, is done uh, in Windows Sandbox. I'm creating scheduled task, which runs only once at uh, current time plus one minute at system mm, permissions. So that user is for the resemblance what uh, on which user you can install uh, applications uh, using Intune. In Intune you can specify system, so I'm also specifying system in the schedule task. Uh, 
this scheduled task invokes PowerShell with execution uh, execution policy bypass. Um, within that PowerShell, I'm also running another PowerShell um, run space, which then runs our installation script. After it's done, uh, I'm creating file with last exit code in our temporary files location. Uh, as I mentioned before, Windows Sandbox is aware of the device that you're using. So scheduled task settings uh, need to be uh, set with allow start if on batteries. If, if that switch would not be there, uh, task uh, sometimes would not start because laptop is on battery. And just uh, registering the task. So that's for pre-configuring the logon command. Uh, that logon command then is saved into that location with values of that script log. Um, then I'm cre then I'm um, passing the startup command, which is PowerShell, and that uh, logon command to my new WSB commands to run. And at the end, I'm invoking that uh, configuration file. So how it would look in the, into, inside those file, inside that file. So as I mentioned before, I'm hosting folder. So it will be ctemp into an install dash VS code, read only. I'm also linking out my binary folders. Uh, and our logo command, which will run within Windows Sandbox, it will run PowerShell, which runs our command, uh, our logon command. Uh, that's the, this is the command. So I'm copying the folder to this location. Then I'm starting the decoding process. Uh, with parameter silence, uh, as I recall, renaming coded file to zip, expanding archive, and removing that unnecessary archive. And the last step is to create uh, our scheduled task, which runs PowerShell, then it runs PowerShell, uh, which runs our installation script and saves last exit code. Uh, it, 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 it is just saving the exit code from this command to the file in this location in Windows Sandbox. All right, so let's go to Sandbox and see if our VS code is installed. Yeah, it's there. So it seems it all works. Uh, let's go to our temporary location. Yeah, we can see, we can see uh, those decoded uh, contents of Intune Win and also our, our exit code. Um, we'll see, install. Yeah, success exit code should be 1641 and we we get that. Also, let's check our log files. You can see that we got Intune software install log file, which contains the information from the script, when it happened, what called the uh, installation, which line and type of information. Okay. And also, we get uh, installation details from uh, installation package. So that now that we have tested our package, let's uh, upload it 
into Intune. So to do that, uh, go to endpoint Microsoft.com and then go to apps, windows, and click add. On the bottom, uh, you will see Windows app, Windows 32. Yes, and then click select. So first step is to upload uh, your Intune Win file. So let's do that. Yeah, that will be that file. Size 60, all right, let's click OK. So um, you need to enter the name, description and publisher. The name will be shown in company, for example, in company portal if, device, if application is uh, available for installation and also in uh, download and install queue. Uh, so let's maybe enter some visual visual studio code description. Recently they've changed so uh, that uh, UI. So first you need to click edit description. You can see that it uh, accepts markdown, which is great. So let's maybe um, our shell installation. Uh, installation of VS Code. Okay. Yeah, it looks nice. And then publisher, so it will be me. Uh, you can also uh, set uh, more information as a category and logo for, but for now it's, I don't need that, so let's go ahead. Install command. So our install command will be invoking PowerShell. Uh, okay, let's do that. Uh, you can, if you write uh, your install installation command like that, it will run PowerShell with 32-bit architecture. Uh, so if you're using in your script uh, some 64-bit uh, environment variables, be sure to enter installation command uh, with uh, with uh, something like that, execution policy bypass always, and then uh, install S code PS1. Uninstall command. Uh, this is very important. Uh, you can, you should not enter something like that in this uh, box but uh, but it's easy to uh, to check what to enter uh, also with our windows sandbox we've got our visual studio code installed here already so just open powershell uh, and then uh, i've got here get installed get Windows installed programs. If you run this, you will get a list of app, app software installed on your device and an install string. So all you need to do is just copy that into your profile. Install behavior system or user. So uh, I want to install application with the highest privileges as a system and then determine be behavior based on the return codes. Because we specified our, our return codes uh, in script here, success 1641, fail 1707. Uh, I can 
use that uh, option. So by default, 1707 is success. Mm, I want my script to fail then. And 1641 is hard reboot. Uh, hard reboot device uh, immediately if no grace period is set. If you set some grace period, which I recommend to do, uh, you, an user will get a notification that reboot is scheduled. Soft reboot just notifies user that you need to reboot your system before installation is finished. It will not schedule mandatory reboot. All right, uh, let's go to the next section. Requirements. So in this part, you specify the requ requirements uh, for the device uh, that need to be met. So uh, those two are mandatory. I'm always selecting the newest. If, if device does not meet the requirements, uh, your package will not be installed. You can also uh, configure your custom script uh, as a requirement. Detection rule. So, um, when installing software, uh, you get the detect. Uh, you can get the installations command. Uh, uninstall string can also uh, can contain MSI uh, MSI app ID which is a unique uh, application ID and it can be entered here. If there is none for uh, us for VS Code, uh, just I will, I will get uh, specific the file. So, okay, that location and that file. Yeah, and detection method. If that file or folder exists, that our installation uh, is completed. Uh, completed with success. Dependencies. You can add up to 100 uh, applications uh, that are codependent. Uh, it means that, it, uh, and it cannot be done, uh, uh, and applications uh, that you can add are Windows 32. So if uh, I've got none, so I, I won't be able to show you how to do that, uh, but uh, it works like that if you and uh, add some dependent application that your application will be installed only and only if that uh, specified application is already installed. Assignments. So uh, there are three options. First option is required. So application will be automatically downloaded and installed on device. If user is able to remove uh, your application, uh, it will be reinstalled at next synchronization window available for enrolled devices. It, devices. it means that uh, the user will be able to install the uh, application by himself or herself from company portal and we got uninstalled. So mm, that third option uh, will be used for uninstalling the application from devices. All right, so let's get uh, all devices. Mm, then you can configure uh, those uh, sections. Show all those notifications uh, and user will see that uh, IT department uh, requires some app to be installed on your device, and then it will show user that uh, download and installation is in progress. If installation 
success or fail, user also will see that uh, you can set uh, one of those three options uh, to only show user that uh, restart is scheduled or hide all those notifications. Uh, let's just leave it as this, as it is. Uh, if you specified your de device restart behavior to hard reboot, it is the best I recommend to set restart grace period. Uh, if not, device will restart immediately, so <laughs> it's better not to do that. Uh, there is a, I think there is a bug here. What I mean that if you don't change those uh, values, um, restart grace period will be not set. Uh, your device will not reboot, but user will not see that uh, reboot is required. So let's just set maybe 15 minutes for for deadline and the dismissible uh, countdown dialog for 14 minutes. Uh, and let's allow user uh, to snooze uh, a minute. Okay. Uh, if you configured all the things that you, you want, just click next. Last, uh, lastly, you will see the summary of the uh, of your Windows 32 application profile configuration. Click create. Now uh, your Intune Win file will be uploaded into your uh, Intune tenant. Uh, it should not take long, dependent on your network uh, speed. Uh, so it happens that uh, the, after upload, your application is not ready, and you will see uh, if not uploading, try creating this app again. It should refresh. Uh, yeah. So everything uh, is OK. All right, so I got a virtual machine. Uh, which is enrolled into my test tenant. Um, there is no visual visual studio code so let me start uh, this into management extension service uh, now that it's starting it should take about one two minutes to sync with intune service and then we will we should see the first notification that uh, our IT requires new software to be installed. So let's just wait a second. I can check if something is happening uh, by going to location. C program data Microsoft uh, Windows Management Extension logs. Uh, yeah, OK. Um, Last logs are from 11.21. Let's just maybe restart the service again. Yeah, and it refreshed immediately. All right, uh, something is happening. Scroll to the bottom. Mm. 
there is nothing uh, interesting right now, so let's maybe check again. Yeah, uh, so I think that uh, Intune is still crunching my application, so it might take some more time. Oh, I, yeah. It's working. So we got the notification that uh, IT department requires changes to the software on your computer, which means that uh, our download and install software Visual Studio Code has begun. Uh, yeah, it should take uh, more or less a few minutes, also depending on your network. Uh, speed. Okay, let's see in logs. All right, wow, it was that was fast. So we get the notification that uh, installation requires your device to restart in 15 minutes, and no additional additional software can be. I think that there is a can be installed uh, uh, on your device until that one is finished. Yeah, and we got because we've checked the checkbox. Allow user to snooze. User will also see that notification and that restart now peak time or snooze. Oh, let's just click snooze. Uh, Visual Studio Code is there that's awesome and we also should see uh yeah that pop-up uh countdown uh, your organization will restart your device at the time to complete uh recent installation uh, and we got the countdown user can restart now or close so if you close that that will not show ever again. So if I click close and we also set a snooze, I think that uh, in some time uh, we should see again that Windows uh, re reboot a notification. Uh, okay. Mm. Let me just show you where the if you go to registry and go to um, local machine software Microsoft Intune management exten extension, then Windows 32 apps, and uh, then you, if you expand this, you will see the applications that are installed, and you. Uh, because I know that my application exit code is 1641, so I can know, I can determine that that it's our VS code uh, installation. We got exit code, we got reboot status, which says hard reboot required. And here in reboot settings, we got configured uh, values uh, that uh, say, to Intune agent that uh, we got snooze uh, and uh, reboot is required. So it, if it syncs with Intune, uh, it checks if re reboot deadline, if reboot flag is true, then it will wait until the reboot flag is false to install another applications. All right, um, so maybe let's just reboot. Okay, uh, other user. Right, 
let's sign in. Uh, maybe let's check the registry again. Uh, okay, uh, we put settings. Refresh. So uh, here, here, intent, acknowledge true. So right now, uh, I think that the, there was a, we could expand the reboot settings uh, where I stored the, the, our reboot flag. Uh, now after reboot, it's, it's, it's not there. So when Intune uh, connects uh, with the service and we try to install new application, the flag will be set to false and uh, agent will be able to install our uh, application. So if you would like to enforce uh, installation again, uh, on example of our VS code, uh, you need to do three things. Firstly, uh, stop win uh, Microsoft Intune uh, service. Oh, it's it stopped already. Okay. Uh, so let, let's maybe just stop it. Uh, then you need to remove that uh, whole container with your uh, keys of your app and also remove application or uh, detection uh, or file of or folder from detection rules. All right, uh, when we start the service, after we start the service, uh, it should sync uh, with Intune uh, okay, go here. Twelve or three. Just wait a second. Right in a minute, we should be able to see that uh, installation uh, of software is required on that device. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, so as you can see, it works uh, very quick. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe let's uh, check uh, our log uh, logs from my installation. Temp, yeah, it's there. Uh, as you can see, uh, start function with uh, installation with arguments code, and it happened, yeah, a, a few times. And VS Code install. So to summarize uh, my PowerShell for the win. Uh, thanks to PowerShell, I can create, uh, I can install software in control environment with uh, my exit code, which is very useful uh, as, you, as you've seen uh, in deploying Windows 32 apps. Uh, when you create one installation script, and uh, then all the work you need to do is to change parameters, which is uh, script, uh, which is application uh, name and uh, installation arguments. Um, 
it speeds up the whole deployment process uh, very. Um, always test your installation package um, in Windows Sandbox. And also, you need to know your script. Um, if your installation won't if your installation will fail in Windows Sandbox uh, and there is no info why or, or, or there are no logs, uh, check your script if there are no issues there. And lastly, carefully configure Windows 32 deployment profile. Um, your installation command be sure to enter correct one uh, and set the de de uh, re device restart grace period or your users will uh, hang you before you re because you rebooted their uh, devices uh, without any warning. Um, I hope you learned something uh, from my session. Uh, if you would like to uh, use uh, my tool, um, just go to my GitHub. Uh, second. Go to my GitHub and uh, find uh, Windows App Sandbox. Uh, it will allow you, uh, it will configure uh, context menu uh, positions for you. And then you will, uh, you will be able to use uh, sandbox uh, tests uh, for your deployments. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for having me and um, have a nice day.